Army presents The Big Picture. An official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Independence Hall, Philadelphia, seat of American freedom, shrine of liberty, and inspiration for generations of American patriots. This is a report on one segment of patriotic Americans whose deeds of valor have charted a course of freedom uninterrupted for over 200 years. The 111th Infantry Regiment, with headquarters almost within the shadows of Independence Hall. This is an honorary company of the 111th, the Franklin Foot Guard, taking up a formation on Independence Square. The Franklin Foot Guard is a unique military organization, reflecting through its actions and bearing the sentiment of the entire regiment, as it pays its respects here to Benjamin Franklin, its founder and original benefactor. General Franklin was even responsible for the flag the company carries. The silent manual of arms being executed is a salute to all of the gallant heroes of the 111th since Franklin's day who have bought freedom for our country during wars by paying with their lives. Also, a reenactment will take place here shortly commemorating an act of an officer of the regiment for which Benjamin Franklin was partly responsible. It was a milestone on the road to American freedom. The history books record it as follows. On a warm sunshine Monday morning, July the 8th, 1776, Colonel John Nixon read and proclaimed to a great concourse of people the Declaration of Independence publicly for the first time. And so it was that there befell to this regiment the honor of proclaiming to the world our declared freedom. Through the years since that time in 1776, the 111th Infantry has never lost sight of its primary objective, the defense of those declared freedoms. Here is a tableau with unmistakable meaning, the blending of the brick and mortar of Independence Hall with the sinews and determination of one of America's ever-ready fighting forces. And now here is Sergeant Stuart Queen, host for the big picture. The regimental colors are symbolic of the fine and honorable traditions of the Franklin Foot Guard and the 111th Infantry Regiment, a military organization with a record that reaches back into the time of Benjamin Franklin's younger days. As a matter of fact, Benjamin Franklin was the founder of a unit of militia called the Associators in November 1747. And this same unit has continued through 212 years and is now known as the 111th Infantry. Today, the 111th is the largest non-divisional National Guard organization in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It is understandable that the regimental insignia incorporated its founder, Benjamin Franklin. Here is an enlarged replica of the regimental insignia affectionately called the Benny, by members of the 111th. There is one incident of unusual importance in the history of the 111th, which created a tradition of lasting significance. It happened in 1763, when Franklin's associators were being besieged by the combined French and Indian forces in the vicinity of Pittsburgh, at that time called Fort Pitt. Since our country was then a crown colony of Great Britain, one of the regiments of the Royal Highlanders, called the Black Watch, was stationed in the colonies. The Black Watch rushed to the assistance of the associators. The tide of battle was turned and the attacking forces repelled. Here is the regimental insignia of the famous Black Watch. Since that historic incident back in 1763, the predecessors of the 111th and the Black Watch 
have maintained a close and friendly association through 196 years. Each year, the 111th Infantry in Philadelphia reserves a vacant chair during the annual ceremonial mess in honor of the Black Watch Regiment. This past year, as in previous years, invitations have been extended to the Black Watch to attend, as honored guests, the 111th Ceremonial Mass. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, Colonel-in-Chief of the Royal Highlanders Black Watch Regiment, replied to the invitation and sent her best wishes. Along with the Claymore, the ceremonial sword of the Black Watch as a gift and token of affection to the 111th. Elements of the Black Watch Regiment in Canada accepted this past year's invitation to attend a weekend of festivities and the ceremonial mess of the 111th in Philadelphia. And the two international military organizations were reunited once again to renew their bond of friendship which has existed since they fought side by side 196 years ago. Our Canadian friends and neighbors from north of the border descended on Philadelphia for two days of parades, ceremonies and good fun during a warm September weekend. Some elements of the Black Watch arrived at Philadelphia's International Airport, where the 111th Franklin Foot Guard greeted them. It was indeed a meeting of two international military organizations, each greeting the other with mutual respect and comradeship. Representing the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania National Guard, Colonel Thomas R. White, Jr., commanding officer of the 111th Infantry Regiment, reviewed the Canadian troops with Major Darcy McGovern, commanding officer of the Canadian Black Watch Captain's Guard. Here is a sight not to be missed. Kilted soldiers dressed formally in the plaid tradition of their progenitors, the Black Watch Royal Highland Regiment, with a record of battle honors and achievements without peer. Then an informal session followed when the Canadian and American troops introduced themselves. And as with soldiers all over the world, each had a great deal to say about his own outfit, yet each wanted to learn more about the other. Some would call this a bull session, but whatever it's called, it is a means by which soldiers get to know each other in a hurry. All infantrymen are interested in the weapons of others. A bayonet is fixed on a Canadian rifle under the watchful eyes of an American sergeant. The city of brotherly love was treated to a parade by the Black Watch Captain's Guard, led by the pipes and drums. Plaza, a concert was given for the local citizenry. Then the colorful and difficult sword dance was executed with assurance and finesse by our Canadian friends. Philadelphia will long remember the concert and pageantry presented by the Black Watch at Rayburn Plaza. With a musical salute to the city concluded, the Canadian troops moved out to prepare for the evening's festivity.
In Philadelphia's famed Union League, the 111th Infantry Regiment was host to the Black Watch during the ceremonial mess. This formal occasion highlighted the year's activities of the 111th, and distinguished guests and speakers were present. Here, the Founders' flag, sometimes called the Franklin flag, is marched in to be placed to the rear of the regimental commander. Then some toasts were proposed. Rise and drink with me a toast to the President of the United States. To the President. Gentlemen, charge your glasses. Rise, drink with me a toast to the Queen. To Her Majesty the Queen. One of the distinguished speakers of the ceremonial mess was the Adjutant General of the National Guard of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Major General Anthony J. Drexel Biddle. Colonel White, Secretary Roderick, Mayor Dilworth, Colonel Wood, General Baker, Admiral McLean, Colonel Allen, Colonel Cook, Mr. Consul General, Women in the services, members of the Black Watch, guardsmen of the 111th Infantry Regiment, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. Now it's my distinct pleasure and privilege to convey to you, Colonel Wood, and to uh, the fellow, your fellow members in the Black Watch, uh, a message of very, very warm greetings from the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Then General Biddle emphasized how fortunate both Canada and the United States are to have created societies capable of producing such fine military traditions as the Black Watch and the 111. The 111th Regimental Commander, Colonel White, next introduced another distinguished guest speaker, the Canadian Assistant Military Attaché in Washington, D.C., Colonel John B. Allen. The friendship which has been displayed by these two great regiments is an indication of the larger close relationship which exists between all members of the Commonwealth and the United States of America. I think a very good example of this marvelous relationship is here in North America, where we have an international boundary of over 5,000 miles between the United States of America and Canada. Not a single gunner of fort. Truly a remarkable feat that exists nowhere else in the world. <laughs> Colonel Allen, speaking on behalf of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, Colonel-in-Chief of the Black Watch Royal Highland Regiment, and acting on behalf of all ranks of the Black Watch, presented the Claymore, the Scottish ceremonial sword, to the Honorable George H. Roderick, Assistant Secretary of the Army, guest of the 111th at the ceremonial mess. Mr. Roderick accepted the Claymore on behalf of the United States Army and all members of the 111th. Then Mr. Roderick expressed his appreciation and thanks to all ranks of the Black Watch. In this Scottish Claymore, I see an interesting analogy. In its construction as a two-edged sword, 
The Claymore can be said to be symbolic of the fighting forces of our two countries, Canada and the United States. Each force, like an edge of the sword, is capable of inflicting separate damage upon our enemies. But like the Claymore, these fighting forces are wielded together operationally by single direction. Thus, we in the United States and Canada, along with Great Britain and our other allies, have joined forces in NATO and are with unity of purpose directing our efforts in a common cause, which is the defense of freedom. With knowledge then of the great symbolism and tradition associated with the Scottish Claymore, and with awareness of the deep significance of the expression of friendship on behalf of all ranks of the Black Watch, I turn over this Claymore to the commanding officer of the 111th Infantry. As a part of the formalities of the ceremonial mess, the adjutant of the regiment reads the honors to commemorate the outstanding military accomplishments of the 111. These honors include 14 campaign streamers, starting with the Revolutionary War and continuing through World War II. During the Revolutionary War, the predecessors of the 111th distinguished themselves at Trenton, Princeton, and Valley Forge. the regiment fought with honor. During the Civil War, the regiment engaged in a whole host of historic battles. Antietam, Peninsula, Manassas, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, Gettysburg, Virginia 1863, Wilderness, Spotsylvania, Cold Harbor, and Petersburg all battles which helped preserve the Union, but cost heavily in casualties for the regiment. After the turn of the century, the regiment was sent down to participate in the Mexican punitive expedition in 1916. General John J. Blackjack Pershing was in command of the expedition. World War I found the regiment with the American Expeditionary Forces in France, winning many campaign streamers and battle honors. Champagne Marne, Aisne Marne, Lorraine, Oise, Aisne, Champagne, Meuse Argonne. The 111th participated in three major campaigns, utilizing the newly developed amphibious warfare, starting with Macon Island in the Central Pacific. This was the start of savage jungle fighting for what turned out to be an island hopping war for the regiment. Next, Kwajalein Island in the Eastern Mandates where a determined enemy had to be rooted out of solid coral. The final campaign of the 111th was on Peleliu, an island in the Western Pacific. Here in the haze of battle, the regiment fought and won its final victory of World War II for the nation. Fourteen campaign streamers, 23 distinguished battle honors from five wars, all of which proudly hang with the flag of the 111th Infantry Regiment.
At the ceremonial mess, taps are sounded in lasting honor of those of the 111 who have died in battle. Later, in the 111th Armory, a dance was held honoring the members of the Black Watch, a happy occasion for the citizen soldiers of two nations. The next morning, members of the Black Watch and the 111th Franklin Foot Guard were invited to attend non-sectarian services held in one of Philadelphia's oldest churches, the Old Pine Street Church, founded in 1768. In the afternoon, the first Canadian Big Four professional football game ever played south of the border was staged in Philadelphia's municipal stadium. The Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Ottawa Rough Riders clashed in a charity classic which benefited both the Children's Hospital and the Rehabilitation Center of Philadelphia. During halftime of the football game, the band and the Franklin Foot Guard of the 111th put on a demonstration of precision marching. Officers of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police who had participated in the weekend of festivities passed in review. and drums and the captain's guard of the Black Watch presented military pageantry and review. faced each other, with the commanding officers prepared to exchange gifts. Colonel White, regimental commander of the 111th, presented to the Black Watch Regiment a gavel made from wood of the White House that was burned during the War of 1812. Colonel William A. Wood, Jr., commanding officer, 3rd Battalion, Black Watch, presented the McTeer Dirk, a dagger-type weapon, to the 111th Infantry Regiment. weekend of festivities with the distinguished Canadian guests served a useful purpose. That is over now, and the 111th has the continuing responsibility of keeping battle trained. 
This hallowed ground is Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, where the 111th engages in a combat simulated maneuver. Here at the 1st Battalion Command Post, Colonel Glenn J. Doman, Battalion Commander, checks last minute details of the maneuver forces before the attack begins. Modern communications equipment coordinates the entire exercise. And then, the attack commences. Every effort is directed here toward a realistic training period. Blank ammunition is used. Casualties are simulated to test the speed and efficiency of the corpsman. This type of training may one day prevent in combat the loss of a leg or an arm or a life. And so it is. The citizen soldiers of Philadelphia and surrounding vicinity who make up the 111th Infantry Regiment of the Pennsylvania National Guard keep combat trained by sacrificing their weekends and evenings and by dedicating their efforts to training on behalf of the nation's defense. Later that same afternoon at Valley Forge, elements of the regiment passed in review for the many visitors and for the reviewing party. Colonel White, regimental commander, General Biddle, Pennsylvania National Guard. General Franklin P. Haller, retired, former commanding officer of the 111th, and General Arthur D. Kemp, Pennsylvania National Guard. The occasion of this review was to commemorate the 181st anniversary of this same regiment setting up winter headquarters on this same Valley Forge terrain during the Revolutionary War. Valley Forge or the Argonne, Gettysburg or Kwajalein Island, the 111th Infantry has proved to the nation that it is ever ready to take up arms in defense of our declared freedoms. You have just seen the story of a tradition and a regiment typical and representative of many similar National Guard and U.S. Army Reserve organizations throughout our country. The 111th has a long and distinguished record of service. Through the years, it has been made up of officers and men who are dedicated civilian soldiers, voluntarily contributing their spare time to military training in the interests of the preparedness of our country and if necessary, the defense of your community. Now, this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.